Finally got my hands on the brand new Ryzen 7 8845HS CPU and it's in this tiny little computer. We got another mini PC. This is the GMK Tech Nuckbox K8. Nuckbox. I don't know why I said it that way, but it's fun to say. The version that I'll be testing has 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So let's go through the specs quickly and then we'll talk about what makes this different from maybe the previous generation. And I'll give you one little clue, nothing. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not gonna be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code, click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25, hit apply, and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. Then you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. This features that brand new Ryzen 7 8845HS. It's got eight cores, 16 threads. Maximum turbo is 5.1 gigahertz, 16 megabytes of L3 cache. The GPU is the 780M. Now that's an integrated GPU, but it is so much faster than anything Intel has. It's You can actually game on it. You can play Cyberpunk, so you'll see the tests. When we get to that, 12 of the RDNA 3 cores, 2700 megahertz on that. And we also have 32 gigabytes of memory, 5600 megahertz memory to be exact. And you can upgrade up to 64 gigabytes. You'll have to remove the existing memory to do that. And we have a one terabyte M.2. It's a Lexar on the inside. The size is 2280, so standard size basically. And there's an extra slot on the inside. Now we'll go ahead and cut in right here and tell you how to get to that. Doing it weird this time. In order to get to that extra slot, you pop the top off, remove four screws, and then you'll need something. I used a little, little shiv here. Use this to open it up. And then you have access to the RAM and you can also install one more M.2, just standard size. Be careful when you're lifting that off because there is a small cable that connects to a tiny fan that's on the back there. We got two fans uh, with some heat pipes and those try to keep everything cool. I will say try right there, but they, they keep it within spec. How about that? We'll say it that way. Now I wanna show you something because this is, this is funny to me. If you look at all their marketing on their website, they show the Geekbench score. Wow, look how much faster it is than the two generations ago. This is the 6900HX, and that's not that's a you know not that crazy of a difference. Okay, how about this down here? Of course it's faster than the new i9s, but that's not the previous generation. I mean, at least they're comparing it to the Ryzen 9 from that generation, but yeah. So that's interesting. Why would they not compare it to the 7840HS? Well, because it's the same thing. It is literally like the same CPU with one minor difference, AI. They should have called this the 7840 HS AI. It's just the 7840 may be a tiny bit faster when it comes to multi-threading or multi-core processing, but they do have the AI processor on board. Now the old generation 7840 HS could do 10 tops, this can do 16 tops. So if you care about that, some application that you're running locally that needs an AI processor, then this has that. But that's really the main difference. Otherwise, this is slightly faster. This is a tiny, tiny bit faster, sometimes a tiny, tiny bit slower than any of the 7840HS based PCs that I've tested. Moving on to Wi-Fi and everything else. We've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and it comes with Windows 11 Pro. So no need to go ahead and upgrade. It's already got the upgraded stuff on it. On the front, we've got two USB Gen, oh, it's 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second there. Then we've got a USB 4 on the front and that can be used as a display port. Then we have our headphone mic combo port and a nice green power button. I kind of like the way this looks, but that's just, you know, subjective. Flipping it around to the back, we have two NICs, as you can see there. Those are two 2.5 gigabit Realtek NICs. If anybody cares, I like the Realtek just about as well as the Intels. If you're installing like a server OS or something, just make sure that it works. But I found the Realtek's have been just fine. We've got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 and a USB 2.0. Then we have full-size DisplayPort, which is nice to see, and HDMI. That's all you get on the back other than the 19 volt power adapter. Oh, and by the way, the power adapter on this is pretty large. It's almost the same size as the physical unit itself. So here's a banana for a comparison, but the unit's small, the power brick's small. So if you're taking this somewhere, you're gonna be carrying the big power brick as well. You know, I've seen some units that have about the same power draw, but they have a much smaller power unit because they've gone for like the gallium nitride, the new stuff that doesn't get too hot and it's a much smaller USB-C power adapter. 
and you can get smaller power adapters for things that pull this many watts. But having said that, the USB 4 can deliver power. So if you want to plug it up to a monitor or whatever, it can deliver up to 100 watts of power. So maybe that's where some of the extra power is going through that USB 4 to power a monitor. So just one plug will we'll turn it on, send you know information to the display and power it on. So I feel like we don't really have too many options as far as ports on the back. There's a lot of room there. We've got some fins and everything. You'll need a USB-C up. I really just wanted an extra USB-C on the back. That would have been nice. I've seen a lot of these units that do have a USB-C on the back and that'll allow you to plug up three or four monitors to the unit. Right now you can plug up three as it is, but you know, this this GPU can handle four, four monitors, so another USB 4 would have been nice, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. Just if you want to run a hub and you want to run a USB-C hub, you're going to have to plug that up to the front. Or if you want to run, you know, something with only one cable, that's got to be plugged into the front and not the back. And so if that's a big deal, then whatever. But yeah, the audio is also in the front, which is a thing that they seem to always do when it comes to many, C many PCs. The audio is always in the front, but... I've just had to learn to live with it, even though I like my audio ports in the back. I must be the minority. All right, the dimensions. 4.4 inches by 4.84 inches wide. That's the front. And then 1.7 inches tall. It also comes with a Visa mounting bracket if you want to put it on the back of your monitor. Pretty easy to do, or just mount it to the wall or whatever. So that pretty much covers the specs. Now let's go in and just see the benchmarks. Let's play some games, starting off with the best game of the decade, and that's Baldur's Gate 3. So right here, we're running it on high, and we're getting around 30, depending on what's going on. Sometimes it drops below 30, but you can see there what's going on with the frame rate and uh, the frequency. All that information is in the top left of the screen. You may have to zoom in, just so you know. You know, this game doesn't require Twitch combat or anything like that, so I can play it like this. But I think I might want to turn it down just a little bit. It depends. I want you to look at this. Here's how pretty it is. 32 feels okay, but when it drops below 28, it feels a little different. But remember, this is turn-based. So whenever you're in combat, you don't have to worry about super fast reflexes or anything. 33, but when I look out here, is it going to get... Yep, 28. Look at that tree. All right, let's turn it down to medium and just see how it runs on medium. All right, overall preset, we're going to go down to medium. There we go. And you know what? If this doesn't work, I'll turn on FSR because that's usually what puts it over the over the limit. Yeah, we only got a couple extra FPS, but medium, you can see the textures here. They don't look as good. The lighting doesn't look as good. It looks okay. I mean, it's, it still looks like one of the best games in a, in a while, but yeah. Carlac, up close, looks all right, you know. So let's go ahead and do FSR. All right, FSR, I'm going to do this on quality. Yep. And then I'm going to come down here and put this on high. There we go. Now let's go in and see what we got here with FSR on. And about the same. I think I'm going to play it this way, if I was going to play it. But I, I did expect it to be a little bit better on this machine, because I've had some similar machines with the 7840HS. Comes and goes. In the cities, this is going to go down a, a bit. So you'll need to either turn up FSR or turn down the quality level in cities. But when you're not in the cities, you can crank it up a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next game. 43 while making faces. Ready? Then All right, we're getting in the 40s. See how it feels. It feels a little slow. I've noticed whenever Street Fighter is not running at 60, it, it feels like slow motion. I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but... Winning yeah. World Tour battles to 30 FPS will help while you're doing the World Tour mode. All right, let's see how this runs. Yeah, this feels great. Where are you going? Permission to get out of the corner. All right, so yeah, we're going to call Street Fighter 6 quite playable. All right, Cyberpunk 2077, running on the high setting with the motion blur turned off because it's garbage. This is slightly faster than the fastest Ryzen 7 7840HS that I have tested. So the 8845HS is one frame per second faster, 36.44 FPS. Let's try this again on medium and see what we get. This is ridiculous, it's one FPS. Well, not even one, it's almost one FPS faster on the medium setting. So. 47.20 average FPS compared to the 7840HS, which got 46.39 FPS. So yeah, I guess it's better, you know? All right, let's talk about our Valley benchmark, 
which is about um, as good as the super high-end 7840HS CPUs that I've seen. It's still a Radeon 780M, even though we've got a you know, higher number on the CPU. Same GPU, and it's really fast. So the score, 5169. This is about as fast as all of the Ryzen 7 7840HS that I have tested. Um, it's actually slightly slower than, a f than maybe one or two of them than the Ryzen 9 7940HS. You know, you know, it's the same GPU like I've said, but I guess I expected the 8845HS to be faster than the 7840HS because number go up, but it's about the same speed. All right, so the single core score that I'm getting is literally identical to the 7840HS that I last tested, which was the fastest. It's um, yeah, 1754. The single core score on the 7840HS was 1756. So I'm calling that basically identical. Now when you move up to the multi-core score, see something interesting here. It's actually 100 higher, 1692. And the fastest 7840HS that I tested was 1525. While the single core score is essentially the same, the multi-core score is a little bit faster. I'm not sure if it's fast enough to justify the extra price you're gonna pay for the higher number, but you know, could be a good deal on a 7840HS soon. All right, Geekbench, our single core score is 2608 and the multi-core score is 12968. I'm not sure, you know, how this really differs as far as like everything that's going on here from Cinebench. Our fastest Ryzen 7 7840HS only scored 1427 and 9624. So this is substantially higher. I'll scroll down here so you can see all of the different scores here. So it seems like it's got something going on underneath the hood. GPU score 28857 and the previous generation OpenCL score was 32290. So it's like the GPU is a little slower, CPU is a little faster, it's weird. So that's our Geekbench score. Let's scroll down and let you see all the particulars. Well, it looks like with great speed comes great noise. We're sticking at around about 90. That's under the G-Junction max, but that's pretty hot. And it has to get loud in order to do that. The fans are just going, going crazy right now. If you want a full picture of what's going on here, I've got hardware info open. So you can see there's what we got. It's just, it went up to 90 in the beginning. But, you know, even though it's been running for a long time, as you can see here, we've got it going for 24 minutes. It's stayed there. So, but, you know, I wish it was colder, but it's, it's okay. I scroll through here if you want to, like, pause it and look at some wattages or whatever. Looks like it's doing a pretty decent job. All right, let's, uh, let's take the noise readings, shall we? This is about a foot and a half away from the unit. It's in the floor. I can really hear this. If I put on headphones, it probably won't be too bad, but, you know, th this has a more high-pitched whir because of the small fan. So it's not the loudest unit that I've tested. I've tested some that have gotten, you know, close to 60, but that's kind of the nature of these small uh, computers. One thing I will say is even though it's decently loud, at least it's a constant sound and it doesn't sound like a vacuum cleaner turning on and off and on and off and on and off. It ramps up smoothly and it and it, then it, you know, descends smoothly. So my final words on this are um, it's pretty much the same as all the 7840HS mini PCs that I've tested. Similar all the way down the lines, a tiny bit faster. Like if you're just doing gaming, then it's probably not a big enough deal to really care. So yeah, it's, it's whatever. If you care about the AI processor, then that's one reason to get this. But really what I would do, and I, and I know GMK Tech doesn't want you to hear, or doesn't want me to say this, but uh, I mean, they've got some to hear what they've got here. But honestly, it's all gonna depend on the price because right now you can get, and this is the Ryzen 7840HS and you've got different flavors. So to get this one, it's 579 versus this one. So yeah, I don't, think it justifies the extra price in my opinion unless you really care about you know some of those certain features but uh, it's like if it's the same price then yes get the other one but if not it's really hard to recommend over the 7840hs except for maybe very 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 small use case scenarios so yeah but i'm glad i did get a chance to test out the new uh, cpu that's pretty cool now i know what it is now i know what it isn't it's literally the same thing all over again amd i wish you would have just take i know it wouldn't have sold as well and people like when number go up 
but it's really the same as the last CPU, just with a little extra AI and maybe a tiny bit more when it comes to multi-core performance, but that's it. It's all you get. So yeah. So overall, I feel like this is a good mini PC. I'd like to see uh, more ports. I'd like to see it a little bit cooler. And I'd also like to have the fans be a little bit quieter. But if those three things are not too big of a deal, then I think it's a great unit. Just um, maybe not if the price is much, much, much higher than the 7840HS. All right, let's see what's on sale right now. This is still half price until we run out. I'm about to go put a bunch more on the, uh, let's see if I can show you back here. The shelf behind me, it's behind the guitar. I'm almost right there. I'm almost having to refill the shelf right there. I'm almost gonna have to do that soon. So that's on sale. And then the Fennec Swift is stupid cheap right now. 1999 for a 3360 flawless gaming sensor. No software needed. You can change all the colors by holding down different button combinations in this video. We'll tell you exactly how to do that. So jump on that while it's on sale for this month, 1999. All right, I'll see you in the comments.